A user on the Magic's forum wanted to know how to copy and paste effects from an object in one movie to a similar object in a second movie. Using an example similar to his, in this part one of two tutorials, we'll see splitting a video clip, multiple movies, applying a mask to a video, applying an effect to a video, automatic tracking, copying effects from one object to another. In the next tutorial, part two, we'll see a different way to apply masks. Let's get started. I'm using Magic's Video Pro X 11, but everything that I show also applies to Movie Edit Pro. First, I'll replicate what the Magic's user had on his timeline. I have a video on track one that has a logo at the bottom right. I want to apply a mask effect to the little dog to blur it out, something like blurring out someone's face. I only want the effect on part of the video, so I'll go to where I want the effect to start and split the video using the scissors. Note that the location is at 2 seconds and 21 frames at the upper left of the preview window. I'll move along to where I want this to end, just when the little dog leaves the screen, and make a second split. Again, note that the cut location is at 6 seconds and 13 frames. Now I've isolated the part that will have the effect. As per what the Magic's user wanted, I have the same video in another movie. I'll click on its tab, except that this one does not have the logo. Note the two movie tabs, original with logo and no logo. More movies can be added by clicking on the plus button. There are additional commands for managing movies by clicking on the down arrow to get the menu. I'll remove this new movie. Back in the no logo movie, I need to put cuts at the same locations in this movie as in the other one. I'll put the playback marker at 2 seconds and 21 frames and split the clip. I normally use a shortcut T to split. I'll put the playback marker at 6 seconds and 13 frames and split the clip. Now I've isolated the part where the effect will be applied in both movies. Back to the first movie. To get the mask, I first have to be in the Effects tab, preferably where the effect is that I want to apply, in this case under Distortion. I'll get a mask by clicking on the down arrow at the upper right. I want High Definition, or HD, and the circular mask Matte 10 should do it. The mask shows up on Track 3 and is applied to the selected clip, grouped, and linked to it. When I select one, the other is selected. Also, the title of the mask shows that it belongs to the video clip. This title for the selected object also shows at the bottom of the media pool. The mask automatically has chroma key alpha applied to it, so there's no need to do this. Now I'll apply the sound effect to the video on track 1, about 100%. The whole screen is now blurry or sandy. Note that the sand effect shows up in the keyframe area. There's a mask button to the right of the sand effect. Clicking on this will turn it red and apply the effect to only the masked area. Now we see the sandy blur only in the masked area. I'll toggle it off, full screen blur, on, sand effect only in the mask. Now I want to move the mask over the little dog at the beginning of the clip. I've selected the mask object and I'll go to the Size and Position effect. I'll move the playback marker to the beginning of the clip and drag the mask over the little dog. I'll make the mask a little bit bigger by increasing the zoom factor and repositioning the mask on the dog. This is my starting point. I want to have the mask follow the little dog and there are two ways to do this. If you have a video with good contrast, you can right-click on the mask object and select Attach to Picture Position in the video. A message pops up advising us to move the overlay object, the mask, to where it should be attached and to resize it if necessary. I already did that, so I'll continue. Another message pops up asking to select the picture section for which movements should follow the overlay object. This section should contain high contrasts. Well, the coat on the little dog has a good contrast, so I'll try this out. 
I'll draw a rectangle over the coat of the little dog by holding down the left mouse button and dragging. Release the mouse button and the program starts tracking the movement of the little dog's coat. This could take quite a while depending on the length of the clip. Once done, play it back to see if it works okay. In this case it does. Now I have the mask with an effect following the little dog. Now I need to apply the artistic blur effect to this section. I'll go to the first movie, right click on the video part, video effects, copy video effects, and we see that we are copying the sound effect, except that. Go to the second movie, right click on the section where we want the effect, video effects, paste video effects. The entire image is blurred. We need to apply a mask. If I click on the mask button beside Sam to turn it on, it automatically wants to load a mask. This is why the mask from Movie 1 cannot simply be copied and pasted here. The mask has to be attached to the video clip using the built-in procedure. I'll use the same mask, Mat 10. Right away, we can see the mask on the image. Now we're just missing the initial size and position and the tracking keyframing. So I'll go to the first movie, right click on the mask, video effects, copy video effects. The dialog box opens showing the effects that are on the mask, X and Y positions, width and height, anti-flicker and attached objects. Now to the second movie. There's a problem here. Because the video and mask are linked or grouped together, the effects will be pasted to both objects, but we only want them on the mask. To do this, I'll ungroup them by clicking on the broken chain link button. Now I'll select the mask object and the video object does not light up. Great! Right click on the mask, video effects, paste video effects, and the mask shows up on the little dog. Play it back and we have the same mask and movement as in the first movie. There's another way to do this and we'll put a mask with an effect on the other dog but we'll see this in the next tutorial. We've seen how to apply a moving blur effect and copy it from one movie to another. Thank you for watching, and next, take a look at the part two tutorial. Till next time, enjoy.